Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time we've got a brand new product from ID Coolant. It's the DX240 liquid cooler. Okay then, this is the ID Coolant DX240 max water cooler. This is a brand new AIO from ID Coolant. Let's get this unboxed and see what it looks like, shall we? Okay, so first of all, you are greeted with the installation guide. Now this is going to show, oh it's actually coloured. This is going to show you how to install it through AM4, AM5 as well as Intel. It'll tell you what brackets it comes with as well. And it's nicely labelled in colour as well, which is very nice. This is for AMD. And then we've got then how to connect the ARGB connector as well as the pump which seems like the overall pump connector is a four pin PWM let's hope it is and that's pretty much it so here we go Ooh. okay so let's have a look what comes in the box in terms of the accessories so I'm assuming it just opens all right okay okay so right that would be for the tube in to make it look a bit neater there's a four pin extender then it comes within this which is metal this is how you uh, uh, install the overall brackets for the motherboard then it comes with amd intel Intel and then it comes with these end standoffs. That's what you use to install it comes with that and then it comes with this thermal paste which is the frost x four Five so that's the overall accessories. Let's have a look at the AIO Actually, I wanted to show you the fans Like I said, this is actually brand new. This has just come out as of the video being recorded now I like that Ooh, I'm assuming there's a plastic thing over it. I don't know. Probably is, looks like. So this is the fan. Tells you the overall DC and the amps. And of course, then it comes with a four pin, which is has a pigtail. So at least cable management would be some, well, some kind of sorted. So there's that fan. And then, of course, there's that fan. So let's get the AIO out. Okay, so this is the radiator. Now, as you can see, the end tanks are actually a little bit extended. That is so the fans will actually look nice and tidy with inside that. Now, that's what it'll look like with the fans. I think that's actually nice. It does keep the overall gap in, so I'm assuming when it comes to the overall performance, it should be fine when it comes to the overall thermals. So that's the radiator, standard radiator, but it's obviously extended. Oh, I have never had an AIO with so much packaging in my life. This is ridiculous. I understand, but bloody, oh, I tell you, it's a pain in the butt having all this packaging. Okay, so, right, here we go. Right, so that's the cover. I'm, uh, d does this come off or? No, doesn't look like. Doesn't look like it comes off. This is the base plate, copper. Big base plate will definitely fit AM4 as well as AM5 and LJ1700. So ARGB with a pigtail so you can connect it up. And then, yes, no, the pump is a three pin. Well, that sucks. But. It's probably the overall design this is meant to light up, but this doesn't seem like it comes off. So I'm not going to force it. But when it comes to the overall fans, now they are 120 by 120 with 25 when it comes to the overall thickness. The overall static pressure is a 2.83 mm, uh, millimeter H2O. The airflow is a 85 CFM with a noise decibel rating on max level at 32.5 decibels. It does have a hydraulic bearing and the overall fast, as fast as far this fan goes is 2150 RPM. When it comes to the overall pump, the pump, according to them, it says that the pump does 
have a noise level of 25 dBA, so whether that's correct, I don't know. The current input is a 0 0.45 amps, and the dimensions of the water block, it is a 73 times 72 times 58. The tube length is 400 millimeters, that's how long these tubes are, and the overall radiator is a 20, it's a 280, 120, and a 3. A 38, the 38 would be the overall thickness, the 120 is what fans it takes, and the 280N would be the overall, uh, well, size, because it's not actually like a normal standard radiator. So, let's get this on the test bench and see how it performs. <laughs> This is the DX240 AIO from ID Cooling. I'm going to put the microphone up to the fans and pull away. This is a 50% fan speed. Barely heard it at 50%. Same thing, but at 100% fan speed. You can definitely hear it at 100%. It's very loud. Right then, so when it comes to the overall benchmarking, now I've done my normal run of tests. Cinebench R23, Blender Pavilion, Blender Classroom, and 3D Mark CPU test. The reason why I use those is because they hit the CPU completely differently. Each test will hit the CPU different. Now, the room temperature was 18.4 Celsius at the time of recording of the time of recording the overall temps and by the end of each run the room did go up to 20 celsius so up by two degrees so you guys know that now i've done two different types of tests one with a standard 5900x that's default settings and then one with pbo enabled so for the out of the box standard default settings 5900x the cpu did draw 142 watts during each test now for cinebench on 23 the idles are 27 with a max of 65 blender pavilion idles 27 with a max of 65 blender classroom idles 27 with a max of 64 3d mark cpu test the idles 27 with a max of 66 celsius now for the 5900X with PBO enabled, now the CPU at each beginning of each test did start drawing 200 watts, but did go down to 188 watts. And the CPU frequency at the time of recording the temperatures as well as the frequency was the highest at 4.9, but did go down to 4.3. And I will tell you why. Now for Cinebench or 23, the idles are 28 Celsius, with a max of 84 Celsius. That's why the CPU frequency started going down because it was coming up to the end of the overall limit for the CPU when it comes to the overall thermal. So it will start pushing down the clock to try and save itself. So for Blender Pavilion, the idles 28 with a max of 81. Blender Classroom, idles 28 with a max of 79. And 3D Mark CPU test, the idles with a 28, max with a 73 Celsius. And as for the overall testing, the, the test bench I did use was a Ryzen 9 5900X with a 
16 gigs of DDR4, an RX 7600 XT, X570 Wi-Fi Carbon Pro motherboard from MSI, 650 watt power supply, as well as the Shadowbase 800FX from Be Quiet. Hey guys, right, so what I'm going to tell you, now, whether you respect my, my opinion, that's completely up to you. I'm not going to tell you or tell you you should or you shouldn't. That I'm going to leave up to you because at the end of the day, it's not me buying it, it's you. Now, the AIO has got some good things and some bad things. Now, the, the good things, I'd say, is the fact that the RGB is not too much in your face. The overall installation is very, very easy and simple. The connector for the fans, but... They're both connected together, so less cable management. The overall, you know, the overall pump house, like I said, it's got like a pixelated effect. It looks really nice. The fans, yes, when it comes to the cons. Now, yes, the fans are very, very loud at 100%, but if you can find a sweet spot between 50 and 100, I think it could, you know, kind of benefit really for the thermals as well as the overall noise. But other than that, I haven't got any other gripes for it. That's the only con I got, is the fact that it's loud. That's it. But, you know, at the end of the day, that is the only thing, really. When they, when someone sends me a product to review, I go by noise, how it performs during testing, with the way it looks, because aesthetics is everything. If it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing, clearly no one's going to buy it. Now, it's got that aesthetic part it's got the overall nice stealth aesthetics when it comes to the overall fan fans and the overall AIO it the overall radiator it's not in your face it's very aesthetically pleasing you know the blacked out looks very nice and then you've got the overall pump house in which does have like a pixelated effect on it but it's not too much in your face I think that's a very good thing now pricing on the other hand I found it online at 56 pound 32 pence that's just me converting it from other countries. Now, whether that's going to be the official price or not, because I don't actually know, I will, I ha I will send out an email to ID Cool, and if I find out, then I will make sure to put a uh, pin comment down below for you guys to actually check it out. Now, it gets my stamp of approval. I think it looks nice. Yeah, the fans are loud, but it's the only thing I really say. That's my only gripe with it. I think it's within that sweet spot, but... You know, whether you agree with that, that's completely up to you. Now, I've got other products here from ID Coolin. I'm hoping to get their newer AIOs that come out, and they know which ones because I've already asked for them. I want them so I can make more videos about them because at the end of the day, I want to work as, with m as many brands as possible because if I can get as many brands working with me, giving me getting, sending me products, I can continue to bring videos to you. And yes, as you've noticed over the last few weeks, I've started trying to improve videos. It's because I want to improve it. Now, eventually I will be having my own space in a spare room for dedicated videos where I'd be able to do much more premium looking stuff. But at the present moment, I'm just trying to improve the videos themselves. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe because I have got tons of stuff coming. I got monitors. I got stuff coming from Thermorite because communication between me and Thermorite are a lot better now. There's stuff you I still got the NAS to do. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe. This is Richard for Welsh Tech. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and a week ahead. Are you good? Right, bye.